All right, good morning. It is Friday the 13th. Happy Friday the 13th, March 13th, and I am pretty excited today because today I'm going to be sharing the story about how my brother and I stole a husky. So, um, this is my first story on my channel, and uh, I don't, I plan on this um, not being the last one. And so let's just hop right into it then. I'm a little nervous, but um, I'm sure it'll work out. I mean, I mean, I, I don't think there's that many people watching anyway. I mean, I bet there's no one watching, but I, that's okay. I'm still going to I'm still going to tell my story. Um, so I'm going to start with the setting. So our story takes place about two and a half years ago. This was the summer of 2017. Uh, this was 2017, and uh, I'd probably say this was about June, July-ish, 2017. And um, so yeah, this was about two and a half years ago, almost three years ago, actually. And um, at the end of our street, um, Actually, I might just uh, I might just draw it and put it on the screen. Um, yeah, I think I'll I think I'll do something like that. I mean, if I don't, that's that's fine too. But uh, uh, <laughs> you played knight to knight to g8. That's a little funny. But um, basically, at the end of our street is well another street, and on this street, which is right at the end of our street is this house where this uh the where these Hispanics live and um one of them's name is Abel. I'm not going to like I'm not gonna like change his name for the video or or uh try to uh hide his name or anything like that because well back in back in the day he was a he was kind of a bully. He was basically the neighborhood bully back in like uh, 2011, 2012. He was definitely not nice to me. He was not nice to my brother. Uh, he lied. Um, he basically hung out with a friend that used to live next door who uh, also basically backstabbed my brother and I, but that's a story for another time. But uh, his name was Abel. He was basically the neighborhood bully back in back several years ago, and uh, his house is right at the end of our street on the other street. Um, at the end of our, at the end of our street, um, basically right at the end of our street, and then turn slightly to the left uh, is his house, and um, his front yard is uh, pretty open. Um, I'm guessing this was about, since this was 2017, um, I would say Abel was about, I mean, I'm guessing he was about, I don't know how old he is, but he's probably about the same age as me, I guess. So not that old. Um, but yeah, I'm just trying to give the setting here. It was a pretty hot summer. It was a, it was a really hot summer, actually. And... Uh, one day, driving by this house is, um, well, we see this be big, beautiful, white Siberian husky just tied up in their yard and basically hardly any shade, basically no shade at all, almost. I mean, there was like one tree with like some thin leaves, but uh, that was basically no shade at all for this dog. And of course, huskies are winter dogs. They are, you know, they're, they're I mean, they're, they're definitely built for cold weather. They are not meant to be, uh, I should probably make a move here. They are not meant to be in the hot months. They're not meant to be left outside, basically, in the hot months of the summer. They're not even supposed to be really um in... hold on let 
yeah, I don't think there's much in, anything more to say about it. Basically, they just it's it's not a good idea to leave huskies outside in the in the hot summer. Um, let's castle kingside. I don't. I mean, it's not a good idea to leave any dog just tied up in the yard. First of all, it's not a good idea to leave a dog outside in the heat like that with hardly any water. Um, but it's even worse if the dog has a heavy, heavy coat, like the husky does, and they're not meant to be—they're not meant to be um, out for long periods of time in in hot weather anyway. I mean, that's really just common sense when it comes to huskies. I mean, uh, that's—I think that's pretty obvious. So, um, continuing with the story, one day. I'd say it was about a week, maybe two or three weeks after first seeing him tied up in their yard. Um, one day, we noticed that he's not there. He's just disappeared. And I was outside one day, and I noticed that he was just across the street, across the street from our house, uh, hanging out across the street, uh, running around with... Um, with part of his, I think he still had his collar on, and uh, he came. He actually came over to our yard. I just called him over, and he just came right over to me in our yard. And he was just, just a big, the most, the most beautiful looking teddy bear you you'd ever seen. Um, I'll show a picture of him right now. Um, so right up, right up on your screen is a picture. I uh, we. we uh, I got my brother outside, and we like we got him onto our uh, we got him onto our porch. He he came up onto our porch rather easily, and I uh, I was so excited. I mean, I love huskies. I was so excited. I got a couple pictures with him. Um, he was just he was so cute. He was a uh, he was awesome. Um, that was the first time we'd ever had a, a husky on our porch, so I was really excited. Um, I just I, I just loved him immediately. And uh, so my mom got home, and she was kind of surprised to see a husky on our porch. And uh, but real quick, actually, <laughs> my time is ticking down on this chess game fast. I'm not really paying attention to the chess game, but uh, I don't. I mean, I don't really care too much whether I win this game or not. I'm really just. I'm mainly just here for the story. But um, real quick, let's make a move here that actually makes sense. Let's play. Uh, I almost want to play this move. I don't. I don't know where he's going with this bishop. He might play this in the castle. I don't know. So let's just play. Uh, let's play my bishop here to f4. I don't know why not. But anyway, my mom comes home, sees this dog in our yard. I um. She asks if it's the same dog that was uh tied up in the yard at the end of the street, uh, at uh, at the end of our street in uh at uh, Abel's house, and um, I told her yes, and um, and uh, she said, thing is, I, was, I, I didn't want to return uh, this dog because um, obviously what they were doing was wrong. They're obviously neglectful owners. It's just, it wasn't right what they were doing. The, base, the dog was basically being tortured out in the hot sun and uh but my mom my mom insisted that we go and return the dog so we go and we go so we drive down there and we go knock on their door first there was no answer at all there was like no cars in the driveway no answer at all it's like they didn't even care that their dog was missing um, so then, so then, after a couple of attempts at knocking on the door, this really tired-looking, sleepy girl, teenage girl, Hispanic teenage girl, uh, opens the door, and, uh, she's like, she's like half asleep, oh, she's barely even, it's like she's barely even hearing what my mom was saying, but, uh, she explains to her that, uh, she, that her that uh we she uh she thinks that we found her dog 
And then she looks in the yard and says, oh, I didn't even know he was missing. <laughs> so I, I thought that was pretty funny. I don't know what this A5 move is about, but yeah, whatever. Um... I guess it's to play this bishop here, so I'm just going to play this a3. So anyway, she says that, uh, so she sends her brother out, which is Abel, and mm, I almost want to sacrifice this knight, but I don't know. If I don't sacrifice the knight, he can take on f3 and then double my pawns. I don't... Mm, you know what? You know what? I'm telling a story. I don't really care that much about the game. I'm going to sacrifice the knight. So knight takes on g5. All right. I'm going to pre-move this. And I'm going to attack the queen. Queen c8 will probably be played, or bishop e7, something like that. Um, anyway, back to the story. She, uh, she sends her brother Abel out. And he, he gets a ride in our car back to our house. So he tells us the dog's name is, well, my mom asks him what the dog's name is, and he says his, uh, his name is uh, Gok. I'm not kidding. His name is Gok. And that is spelled G-O-K-E. G-O-K-E, Gok. That was the dog's name. So I don't know if he was lying or if that was actually the dog's name, but that was really weird. I don't know if that's that's probably some kind of uh, Hispanic thing. He just dropped his queen, but I don't think I should take the queen because then there's rook takes here, and I don't like that. So maybe I should just play f4. f4. This game is... I don't know. This game is distracting me from my story because the game is super sharp. Uh, I shouldn't have sacrificed the knight. Maybe I should just play h4. Hold on, give me a second, guys. f4. f4 looks better. I, I want to open the f file. Well, my queen now defends the square. Kind of. Not really. I'm probably going to lose this game. All right. So anyway, back to the story. He gets a ride to our house. Um, he puts a leash on the dog and he walks the dog back to our house and like thanks us or whatever. So um, I was pretty disgusted because we just like gave them the dog back just so the dog could be tied up in their yard again and be miserable again. So over the next several days, we see the dog miserable as hell, just sitting in their yard, and um, and maybe I can take maybe I can take this bishop actually. If it, wait, hold on, give me a second. Bishop takes. Is there an in between move of this move, and then I take, and then bishop takes my queen. I take this queen. Wait, hold on. Even in pieces, takes. Even in pieces, takes here. And then I take the rook. I'm up a rook. Hold on. I'm still up a rook. I take this queen. Yeah, this is good for me. Okay. And if queen takes bishop, I'm just going to play g3. All right. So not too bad. I'm down a piece, but I've got a lot of pawns. Anyway. Um, so the dog's tied up in their yard once again. And um, for several days. But then one day he disappears again. And um, by the looks of it, it looked like he had just like I don't know, escaped somehow by himself. He just looked like he had just gotten out on his own again. And um, I don't like this bishop. All 
So, uh, I don't remember how we found out exactly, but, um, my mom somehow found out that the dog was at the pound or the animal shelter or, or something. Um, I forgot exactly where, but after not so, not too long, the dog ended up right back in the yard again. So apparently they had gone to the, uh, apparently they had gone to the animal shelter and uh, paid the small, the small fine to get the dog back. And uh, that was it. The dog appeared back in their yard, and um, I was just getting angrier and angrier about this. So, um, hold on. So I was willing to do something big. I was willing to do something drastic. So I decided that I was going to go and in the middle of the night, free this dog. And I wasn't going to feel bad about it either. So, but I didn't want to do it alone. That's the thing. So I decided to confront my brother about it and tell him what my plan was. Um, because I knew that if the dog ended up in the, at the pound or the animal shelter again, then, well, they wouldn't, they wouldn't let him. Uh, they wouldn't let them get the dog back because if he's been there already, then they consider that. Uh, then they consider that the owner being neglectful, and they just they don't they don't let them get the dog back. Uh, so anyway, um, I go into my brother's room. I tell him my plan. I wasn't really expecting him to be on board with me with this plan, but um, I told him that I could really use his help and, uh, but if he didn't want to help me, then I was just going to do it by myself and I was going to risk it. So he tells me, so he actually surprisingly, he told me that, um, Ooh. Surprisingly, he told me that uh, if I was going to go ahead and do it anyway, then he he had no choice but to help me. So, um, so I was like, I was pretty excited. That's exactly what we uh, that's what we were planning on doing. So that night, we decided to well, we have a treehouse in our yard, and but it's not really a. Uh, it's not really that it's not really that good anymore. It's like there's a lot of rot in it and it's not really safe to go up there anymore. But back in 2017, it was and we went up there pretty often, not as often as we used to like back in like 2012, 2013, but 2017 we still up, went up there sometimes. So that night, we decided to do a stakeout in the treehouse and we uh we decided we were going to like just do a lockout and just stay out all night. And we were going to wait until the middle of the night, and then we were going to go over there, and we were going to basically rescue this dog. So, um, hmm, he has a nasty threat on H2. Hmm, that's a checkmate threat. Should I worry about it? Uh, probably not. Probably just play Rook F2. Hmm. Rook F2. Anyway, so my brother, he uh, he takes this he, he takes this knife with him, uh, just in case, because you know you're going out. It's a we kind of live in a bad neighborhood, and you know you just you're going out in the middle of the night, 1 a.m., 2 a.m., 3 a.m. It's uh not really safe, you know. So I. He just wants to be prepared. 
so anyway. Oh, I almost blundered my queen. So anyway, uh, we decided to dress up in a lot of black. Like uh, we were, we both wore like solid black clothes, black jackets, basically anything black we could find. And um, we just like we went we went black, and we basically got pretty tired pretty fast staying up in that treehouse. Like we stayed up like the hours started going by pretty fast or pretty slow. I don't remember, but, uh, we stayed up and like watched movies in the treehouse or something. And, uh, we almost got to, we almost chickened out. Like we almost got too tired and chickened out and went to sleep, but we just, we held out and we, um, stayed up long enough. And eventually at about, I'd probably say 2 a.m., maybe 2.30 a.m., uh, eventually we just decided to just go ahead and, uh, ooh, this is really sharp. Gosh. Uh, anyway. Oh my gosh, it's so hard to focus on the story when the chess game is this crazy. <laughs> so I can take this knight and then he'll take my rook. Let's go ahead and just take that knight. Anyway, uh... All right, let's just see what happens here. So about 2.30 rolls around, and um, ooh, about 2.30 rolls around, and we head out, right? So we head down the street. It's like super gloomy, kind of foggy, and um, ooh, I don't know about this. I might have to run my king all the way over here. Let's just go ahead and do it. I might have to run my king all the way to like this square or something. But uh, anyway, I mean, what if he does something crazy like takes this rook? All right. So anyway, we go down the street. It's in the middle of the night. It's like 2.30 a.m. And we, uh, we, hold on. <laughs> Let me check my... All right, so we get to the end of our street, and, uh, <laughs> oh my goodness, we get to the end of our street, he's going to play rook down, he's going to play rook h3, I know he is, yep, all right, so we get down to the end of our street, and to the right of, uh, to the right of Abel's house, there is, uh, Hmm, let's go here. There's some bushes to the right of his house, like blackberry bushes. Sometimes during the summer, we would go there and pick blackberries and eat them and stuff. I mean, I think maybe they were technically on Abel's property, but uh, um, it can't really know for sure. It's hard to know for sure. It's kind of, it's kind of away from his house. Like if you if you crouch in the bushes, um, there, then uh. Let's go here. <laughs> oh my gosh. I'm losing. I'm actually losing now. You just have to take with a queen. I'm lost. 
Oh, no, he didn't. Okay. Uh, one second. Hold on. Maybe I can pull something out. Okay. Let's go. Um, let's just go here. He's going to take my bishop and I'm lost. Let's pre-move that move. No. Yeah, pre-move that. Yeah, I'm either winning or I'm going to draw. Hold on, pause the story real quick. This game is uh this game's going to have a crazy ending. I'm I'm either going to seriously mess up and lose or I'm going to draw. Is there any way I can win? Can I just win if I go here? King c6. Is that winning? It's a queen check here. So probably not. There's too many checks. Like there's too many checks that black can play. I think I can just go for a draw. I think that's my only chance going for a draw. Yeah, it's looking like a draw is my only option. All right, so back to the story. We were there's a there's a pretty good place to hide in the bushes. Um, hmm. Maybe I'm not, maybe I can't draw. Maybe I can only lose. Probably. Yeah, I'm going to lose. Yep, let's take a pawn. All right, time to lose. Queen here. That'd be funny. Queen here. I dare you. Play queen there. Queen, play queen b3. Nope, he didn't fall for it. All right, let's just go here, I believe. No, no, let's not go to a6. If I go to a6, I'm mated in one. Queen b7. Checkmate. Uh, let's go here to... How about a4? What if I go to a4? What then? And then rook here. Yikes. What if I go here? If I go here, the rook check. Um, oh yeah, I'm lost. Yeah, I just didn't pay attention in this game. I'm busy with telling a story here. Is there any way I can do anything? Well, if I go king here, Queen b7 is not checkmate because I can take this pawn, and then uh, we'll see what happens. All right. I'll take this pawn as soon as he plays it. It's still complicated, but uh, so yeah, we're down there hiding in the bushes, right? But there's still like lights on. They have like this porch light on outside. Um, they don't really have a porch, but they have this this light on outside their house. Um, and there's also this street light that's like right near where we're at, where th at the bushes. That's just like giving off this little, this like this uh, just enough light so we could like see what we're doing, but not enough light if uh, if like someone was you know looking at us trying to recognize us or anything like that. Um, so yeah. We were hiding in the bushes, and we saw this porch light on, and um, occasionally we heard voices. We were hiding in the bushes. I swear, we were probably hiding in the bushes for like half an hour, just uh, waiting for, um, just waiting for them to like turn the lights off in their house because we could still see some lights on inside their house, and we were just waiting for them to go to bed, right? Just waiting for them to go to sleep. It was like 3 a.m. and they still hadn't gone to sleep. There was still like lights on in their house. Um, but uh, 
they're Hispanic, so I don't really know like what they're what they're doing on a daily basis. I don't know how late they they stay up or um uh, anything like that. But uh let's go here. I think this is a good move. Let's go here. I don't know. I could have blocked with the queen, but I don't know about that. Queen takes queen. King takes queen. I've got three pawns, but the rook might be able to do something. Let's do this. Maybe I'm winning. Maybe not. We'll see. We'll see. We shall see. Let's go here with the king. I've got three pawns. He has a rook. I might be losing, but we'll see what happens. Um, so we were like we were like waiting just so long. It felt like it felt like years we were waiting for these people to um <laughs> this might be a draw. I don't know. We'll see. Uh, but after a long time waiting, we, uh, we finally saw them... We finally saw them turn off, like, uh, all their lights and stuff. And if, ooh, if king here, then I'd play this b7 check. All right. Let's go here. Yes. We're going to force a draw. Even though I should have been losing. Let's go here. Let's go here. Let's take this if he takes. No, nope, we're going here. Um, hold on, let me look at my phone real quick because I've got the script. We just drew the game. Okay, lost one point. I feel like I should have. Uh, I feel like I uh, should have been winning at one point. I mean, I did sacrifice a piece, and it probably wasn't a sound sacrifice either. But. Uh, I'm glad. I'm happy with the draw. I'm happy with the draw. <laughs> it's fine. I mean, I was I was definitely losing at one point, but I'm happy with the draw. So yeah, they would not go to bed. Like I swear, they. It's like it was like an hour. They just would not go to bed. But eventually, we noticed that their pretty much all their lights went off in their house except for like one, where we could see this this one window just would not the light just would not go out, and uh, we decided we did not want to wait any longer, and we just. Um, we just decided to go for it. So, attempt one. Now, my brother was the one that had the knife, but we, he said that we would only use it in case we absolutely had to. Well, it was actually my idea that I said that we would cut the we'd cut the rope. Uh, we would cut the husky's rope with a knife. Uh, that was that was my idea. Actually, I take full credit for that. But um, I said we would only do it if we could find no other way to set this husky free. Now, um, we both go into the yard. We, we, uh, there's a little white fence that's kind of broken. It's very easy to get through. So we just like, we crawl, uh, we crawl through it and we go and look at the dog. The dog is like super excited, right? Super excited to see us. He's like, it's like he almost, it's like he knew we were there to rescue him, right? So, uh, um, I'm just I'm impressed with the way he acted. He didn't like go crazy barking or anything or howling or anything like that. Um he just kind of knew we were there to uh rescue him or something. He was whining a little bit and moving around wagging his tail making some noise. He was just really happy to see us. But um I was afraid he was going to bark and wake people up, but uh he didn't do that and it was it was a a bonus for us. So we started examining him trying to this dog had a collar on so tight, 
like his he had like this harness on leash attached to him the rope attached to him it was on so tight like super tight it looked like it would take uh everything in the kitchen sink to get this harness and collar off of this dog it was just on so tight we we spent like 20 minutes i swear we spent like 20 minutes trying to figure out a way to do this without cutting the rope because cutting the rope was well for one it would probably be pretty time consuming and two it was risky because uh it would make it pretty obvious that someone did this on purpose and the dog didn't just get out on his own but anyway we just um he held he held still he he cooperated enough for us to look him over and um eventually we just decided to call it and we had to cut it we had to cut the rope there was uh there was no other way to get around it there was just no way to get this thing off without cutting the rope so i i have to admit I did kind of get scared. Like, I was a little nervous. I was almost ready to chicken out of the whole thing. Um, but my brother, he was, like, he was, like, pretty confident. Like, he actually was, he was, like, really, it was almost at a point where he was, like, uh, wanting to do it even more than me. But, uh, I mean, I almost chickened out, but I didn't. I, like, I, I made sure to, to stick with it. But my brother had the knife, so... Really, we it was really only a one-person job to cut this rope and set this dog free. So what we decided to do was I decided to keep watch from the bushes and make sure nothing bad happened and make sure um, uh, I think I would give a whistle if, if it meant for him to run. Like if I saw someone come out of the house, uh, I would whistle or something like that, or maybe I'd give some other noise, but I don't really remember. But... I would whistle or something like that, and that would give him the signal to run. So while he while he was in the yard cutting the rope with a knife, um, I would stay in the bushes and keep watch, basically. And uh, and this this was a pretty long process. Like I was actually pretty dang scared at that point. So he's he's in there for like he's probably there for like a whole five ten minutes it felt like hours but it was like five to ten minutes he was trying to cut this rope and then uh the dog is like making the, the dog starts just making too much noise right and um the porch light comes on i hear voices i didn't even there wasn't even really enough time to even give joel my brother um my brother joel a uh a whistle signal or anything like that like as soon as that porch light came on and as soon as he heard voices and stuff he immediately bolted from that yard and back to where i was at the bushes it it was like it was so fast like i did not need to give him a signal at all but um it, it was just so frustrating because it was almost 4 a.m at that point and they just would not go to bed it's like they just wanted to stay up all night uh they came over to the dog they they were like, uh, I think I think they gave him a treat or something to like get him to calm down. Uh, but yeah, they looked. They were like they had like, it was like two of them. I think, I think we saw flashlights, and uh, it was like they definitely knew something was up. Um, so that was that was pretty frustrating for us. Um, but yeah, after a while, they went back inside, and after. Uh, we'd probably been out there for an hour and a half at least at that point, just waiting for the right time to do this. So we gave it some time, and after a while, my brother decided to go back in for attempt two. But um, before <laughs> before he went back in, um, <laughs> it hit me right across the street from Abel's house uh basically at the end of our street like actually still on our street there is a house that's right across the street from Abel's where a police officer lives and right before 
uh, Joel goes back in for attempt two on freeing this dog, the police car just comes out of the driveway of the house across the street from Abel's. And we just like, we just start getting really scared. Like the police car comes out, it sits there for a minute and then it turns left and it leaves, like it basically leaves the neighborhood. I swear I had completely forgotten that a police officer lived right across the street and could have been watching us at any point. Like I was, I was pretty terrified at that point, and so was my brother. But uh, so we waited a, quite a while longer because we were kind of expecting. Like we felt like as soon as we tried to free this dog again, we felt like the police car would come right back at the worst possible time and catch us. So, uh, uh, so we were, so we were pretty scared. You know, like almost wanted to chicken out. But uh, after a while, Joel goes back in to. Uh, to finish cutting the rope. And I swear it did not take that long, but attempt to, when he went back in after just a few excruciatingly long minutes, but it didn't take that long, but after a few long minutes, um, he just says, he just whispers really loudly. He's free. He's free. He's out. He's out. He's free. So then suddenly, uh, I see Joel come out, un- come out through the fence. And then I look and I just see this, this, big happy white dog just looking so excited so happy that he just got set free he's just running he just runs around the yard he jumps over the fence like immediately and just runs up the street he just looks so he just looks so happy to be out and just so free and it was just it was just a cool he was probably just feeling the best feeling of freedom at that moment it was just amazing to watch but uh he ran up the street turned left on the next street with a uh, part of his rope still dangling from his collar and uh and that was it that was uh we had we had accomplished it we had done it and we were just like so excited we uh um uh, we got out of there as soon as like we got out of there as fast as possible but um what we should have done was went down the road away from Abel's house, but I don't know. We were just like, we weren't really thinking. We just kind of, uh, we just kind of casually started walking up the road past Abel's house, like literally right past Abel's house. And, uh, that probably wasn't a good idea because maybe someone from the window might've, uh, might've watched us walk past and might've seen the dog get out. But, uh, yeah, we actually walked right up the street and then turned left to where that we, to where we saw the dog go and uh we did not see the dog again but we last time we saw the dog was like uh in someone else's yard over on that next street and um we basically stayed there for like another hour we basically just like crouched in the bushes um near someone else's house on that next street and just we just like stayed there for like another hour just just like you know, hearts pounding fast, just laying there in the bushes, almost wanted to fall asleep, but like not really. Um, basically, we just wanted to wait a while before going home because we didn't want to go home immediately because, well, I don't really know why. We were just kind of, we were kind of afraid to go home immediately um, for reasons I can't really remember. But we basically stayed out until probably about 5 a.m., but eventually we went home the long way like we, we like we like we took like an extra two streets to get home when we didn't really need to but basically we went home the long way we made sure not to pass Abel's house again um it was a uh, almost sun by the time we got back to the tree house it was like almost sunrise and Joel goes back to sleep uh, but I don't think I ever got back to sleep well actually not back to sleep we never actually went to sleep in the first place but uh I don't think I ever went to sleep. Joel went to sleep like immediately. But uh, the next morning, I'd probably say it was only like an hour later, by like 6 a.m., it was morning, and I decided to go for a walk just to look for the dog. Like really, I just went through a walk through my neighborhood just to just to see, just to see if the dog was out and about, just to look for the dog. While I was out walking, I get text messages from my brother. 
and he's telling me that Abel is at our house. And this kind of surprised me because the last time the dog got out and I found him across the street and got him to our house, he had been gone for like a week, maybe two or three weeks before um, before I before I saw him across the street from our house. So apparently they, well, what we had what we had thought to believe was the dog had uh, the dog had they hadn't really been looking for the dog that much at all the first time he got out but this time he got out it was literally the next morning at like 6 30 7 a.m where they're already out <laughs> it's like they're it's like they it's like they knew like they like abel is at our house immediately i mean i maybe he didn't suspect that we uh came in and <laughs> stole the dog but uh since we were the ones that uh since we were the ones that found him and returned him uh to them just a couple weeks before um i guess he maybe he just thought that we might have seen him or have known where he was but as for me at the time i was really scared like i was getting text messages from joel saying that abel was at our house he was on our porch he was talking to our dad and uh he was you know he was asking a bunch of questions and i could tell joel was uh nervous as hell i was scared um it was also pretty suspicious that I was gone, like I wasn't even there, I was out walking. So that made it even more suspicious that we might have done something. So I came home, right? Abel's there. He's talking to my brother. He's talking to my dad. So he's confronting us. And he looks really suspicious of us. And, uh, but we, we, we kept our cool. We kept our cool. Um, he, he was asking us about the dog, and I said uh, we hadn't seen him. We didn't know anything. We denied everything. We lied. We denied. We denied everything. Okay, and uh, he he never outright said that we that we did anything. Like he never actually flat out accused us and said we did anything. But I kind of said that. Uh, well. Well, he mentioned that he saw that the rope was cut, so someone had to had to have cut it. And I said, I immediately said, well, we didn't do it, so I don't know why you're telling us this. And then he said, well, I never accused you of doing it. And he may be right to some degree. He may be right that he never did flat out accuse us of doing that. But at the same time, he kind of did. If you, Like, if you think about it, he kind of did accuse us of doing that. So I said, well, why did you bring it up? If I said, well, you kind of just did accuse us. Like, why did you bring it up if uh, if uh, you weren't accusing us? Why are you even here? So um, he said that he even said something crazy like, my sister saw you outside our house, but um, we, ju we just denied it because there's really no way. We were wearing like all black, but there's really like no way... Uh, his his sister could have seen us i mean i guess she could have but there's no way she could have like i remember it pretty clearly there's no way that his sister from a window could have uh could have seen us and recognized us like could have seen our faces clearly and recognized us because our faces were covered pretty well like um i think my brother had uh i think part of like a a ski, uh, kind of like a ski not a ski mask but like he had something to like um cover his face just a little bit but we were we were wearing like pretty much all black plus hoodies so uh we were covered up pretty well there was uh there was no way his his sister could have just seen us through a window and recognized us in uh in the type of lighting that it was there's no way that uh she or him could have known for sure it was us there's absolutely no way and uh, I'm confident to say that. There's no way they could have known for sure that it was us. So we just denied it. He seemed to let it go, and he just left and went home. 
And uh, that's pretty much the end of the story. But there is one more thing I would like to add that really, that really made me feel good about the whole thing. That uh, it really made me feel like we accomplished something because I'll tell you this, I'll tell you this. That husky never appeared in that yard again. And you know why? Because eventually that husky ended up back at the animal shelter, back at the pound. And I don't know if they went and tried to get him back or not. But if they did try to get him back, they obviously didn't let them get the husky back because, you know, he had already been to the pound before and they had already gotten him back once before. And if they try to get him back a second time, they, they, um, they consider that as, uh, one too many times. They consider that neglect and they will find the dog a new home, especially a dog of that kind of breed. They're not going to just like, they're not going to just, um, they're not going to just like uh, do anything bad to the dog or anything like that. They would find a, a dog, a purebred husky like that. They would find a dog, a dog like that, a new home, and they would not let that. Uh, they would not let those uh, Hispanics uh, get that dog back. I know that for sure um, because that dog never appeared in that yard again, and uh, I was really. I got to admit, I was really proud of myself and my brother. We were like, we were really proud of ourselves for what we had accomplished because that dog never appeared back in that yard again. And I like to believe that that dog was never uh, kept in a miserable condition like that again. So um, all in all, as risky as it was and as uh, as nervous as we were, as, as exciting as it was, it turned out to be worth it in, in the end. I mean, really, we... Um, it was risky. It took a lot of uh, it took a lot of uh, nerves for us to do that. But uh, I've never actually told this story to anyone, really, the full story anyway. But uh, I think that's gonna wrap it up for this story. We, I def, I, we we definitely felt like we accomplished something after that one. Um, so yeah, that's my first story on this uh, on this channel. I I lost the chess game. Oh, I didn't lose the chess game. I drew the chess game when I was losing. Well, first, first I think I was winning, then I was losing, and then it turned out to be a draw. Um, but yeah, this video's gone on long enough. I'm not going to go through the analy the ana the ana blah, I can't speak the analysis of this game, but uh, I will later when I'm done recording. Um, but yeah, it's uh, it's Friday the thirteenth, and that's that's pretty rare. <laughs> Um, I think it, I, to be honest, I think the story actually takes place on Friday the 13th. Like, I think the night we actually went out and, and, uh, and stole this husky, well, I'd like to say rescued this husky, uh, in a way, I think it also took place on a Friday the 13th, as crazy as that sounds. I think I actually remember, I think it actually did take place on a Friday the 13th, but anyway, that's going to do it. Um, I don't expect anyone to be watching. I'm just doing this. I don't, I mean, I don't, I don't make these videos for people to watch them. I just make these videos because it's my hobby. Also, one more thing before I go, um, I've been hearing a lot about this coronavirus thing. And I just wanted to say before I end off this video that um, my thoughts go out to everybody who has um, tested positive for this virus. And, uh, I, w I wish everyone the best who has um, who has uh, come in contact with this coronavirus, and uh, I just um, I just hope that uh, I just hope everything turns out okay. I wish everyone the best who has um, who has this virus, and uh, I want you to know that um, I'm I'm just uh, sending my thoughts out to um, to the to the people who are who are scared of this virus and who are uh, who may have this virus i just want everyone to stay safe and um just uh let you know that i'm that i'm uh that i'm thinking about it um i'm just uh set, trying to send good thoughts out to uh to um to everyone who has this virus and uh i hope everyone stays safe and uh not to panic. I feel like everything's going to be okay. So try not to panic and stay safe. And uh, 
my thoughts go out to those who are struggling with this. And yeah, I've been hearing I've been hearing quite a lot about it. It is like I think that's the it's like that's the only thing the news is talking about right now is the coronavirus and uh it's uh it's causing a lot of uh it's causing a lot of panic, you know. That uh I just wanted to give my best wishes to to those who are who are uh stressing out over this. I mean um, it's kind of a big deal, you know. So, uh, anyway, I think that's going to end the video now. Um, yeah, I think I said everything I needed to say. And I will be back next week. Bye for now.